Hello and welcome to our very first edition of Observability at AWS. Today we're kicking off the series with a super interesting topic and that comes out of the uh, telemetry space. And uh, my guests today are Lolita and Shibo. So please, please quickly introduce yourself. What's your role in AWS? All right. Uh, hi, Michael. Thank you. Uh, I'm Alorita Sharma. Uh, I work as a uh, principal technologist uh, on the AWS observability team and uh, lead the uh, uh, all our contributions and effort, engineering effort uh, on AWS uh, distro for open telemetry, as well as open telemetry on the project upstream. Uh, work closely with the Prometheus, Stefana, and um, uh, open telemetry communities uh, in the in the developer space, and uh, super happy to be uh, diving into what we are doing with open cool. telemetry today, and uh, and uh, doing a cool demo later with Shibo, uh, one of our in engineers joining in to walk through the uh, cool additions we have made to the open telemetry operator. Awesome. All right. So then let's jump directly into it. What uh, problem does open telemetry solve for our customers? So um, good question. As many of you know, uh, open telemetry is a very popular agent, uh, open source agent uh, component uh, and a, a CNCF project that has just you know, reached incubation stage. It uh, provides open source, uh, an open source observability agent, uh, which is also called the collector in uh, open telemetry, as well as a open telemetry data protocol called OTLP in short, which enables uh, users to be able to uh, collect data and be able to manage and uh, monitor data, and then be able to export it to the framework in a monitoring framework of their choice uh, to be able to uh, you know, manage the data that you are ingesting from different data sources and then being able to analyze and debug uh, the health of different services and applications. Open telemetry is uh, quite a large project. And as you can see, uh, you can instrument the, your applications in 11 languages, supporting all three data signals you know, for observability, which are traces, uh, metrics, and logs, and, and be able to use the open telemetry collector to ingest the data and then being able to actually send that data to monitoring backends. Uh, metrics and traces right now are uh, fully supported. Uh, traces is at a stable state. Uh, in terms of having stable APIs across all the components in open telemetry, metrics is in progress, and I'll go a bit into the status of where we are, and um, logs is right behind, uh, so can, coming up I, you know, later this year. Can I quickly interrupt you there and, and kind of like summarize that on a, on a very <laughs> simplified level? So in, yes. in the long run, essentially, rather than having like, you know, three or four different agents out there, you know, FluentBit and CloudWatch agent and this and that, you would have essentially one uh, agent, the, the O2 collector, and all kinds of signals, logs and traces and metrics all, all together can, uh, can be essentially uh, collected and, and forwarded uh, to, to the respective destination. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and, you know, that is the power of open telemetry as a collection agent. Um, again, customers, you know, it really gives customers a choice of using one collection agent to support all their telemetry data ingestion, uh, as well as processing and export. It really provides interoperability across, you know, multiple um, telemetry protocols that have existed over time, consolidating that into a standard industry defined open telemetry data protocol, uh, which handles both uh, Delta as well as aggregate uh, data from, you know, whether that's for metrics or for traces or logs. Uh, and also, you know, enables the uh, ability to plug in multiple destination uh, sources of ingest uh, data that can be ingested to multiple destinations. The great power again is, you know, you instrument once as a, as an, as a user and then are able to deploy everywhere. And that is a very powerful and very cost-effective in the long run. 
Um, another area, of course, which every customer cares about is having the choice to have vendor neutrality, not being attached to you know, any specific um, agent and being able to take a world-class, you know, robust, scalable agent and being able to use that for all their ingestion uh, telemetry uh, cool. needs. So open telemetry obviously offers a very compelling uh, solution to customers. Um, based on that, uh, AWS also released and fully supported uh, distribution, uh, which is a downstream distribution where all the code con contributions that are being made are on the project itself uh, in open telemetry. And uh, what AWS provides is certification for you know, security uh, guarantees on the components that are included in the distribution, as well as predictability and performance. Uh, we do a lot of performance testing as well as integration testing end to end for all the pipelines that are supported and as well as provide AWS support for the distribution itself. Uh, another cool thing that is uh, you know, very useful for the distribution, ADOT especially, is to be able to connect and have plugins you know, available out of the block box that customers can use for picking up ECS metrics or EKS, Fargate and EC2 metrics as well as Lambda application metrics. So today, you know, that one click uh, experience is super useful to customers. You know, it's the ease of use and just being able to run with it. Uh, there are several re receivers and exporters also available in the collector, which are, you know, again, connecting into uh, the monitoring services of your choice. If you're using CloudWatch already, you can go and plug into CloudWatch with your metrics. Uh, you can use X-Ray for your traces, uh, Amazon managed service for Prometheus for your Prometheus metrics. If you're using, you know, if you're in a Kubernetes world or an EKS world, uh, as well as the Elasticsearch service where you can consume logs. So uh, again, and, and we also have bundled, a, you know, series of partner solutions. Say you're using uh, Splunk or, you know, other vendors who are using OTLP like Honeycomb, you have the option of being able to ingest data from there and use a different monitoring platform of choice. So that, this flexibility is really great and we keep up, you know, with the upstream releases on a regular basis. Um, that said, again, I wanted to talk a bit about, you know, what is happening on the, uh, on the open telemetry project. Uh, what are we working on specifically here? And um, uh, what we have been doing is that we are deeply involved on in the project. We have you know, several engineers uh, who are leading the effort uh, primarily in the metrics area and the tracing area right now, where we are leading uh, the Prometheus interoperability work group, the specification changes, as well as the development effort, uh, which means that uh, you know, we have added the Prometheus remote write exporter in collaboration with the community. Um, also uh, built out uh, additional support for metrics, you know, being able to ingest in Prometheus metrics onto CloudWatch, as well as the EMF metrics supporter, which, you know, ingests EMF metrics into CloudWatch. Um, and then having a stats receiver available, as Michael was alluding to earlier, being able to provide that interoperability through one single collection agent is very powerful for customers as well as you know, working on several core components in the collector as we actually build out metrics uh, support in, in the core collector itself. We've also contributed to building out the uh, language SDK metrics, APIs and uh, uh, SDK uh, functions. Uh, C++ uh, is one of them. We've also contributed several Prometheus exporters um, in different languages such as Go or JavaScript or Python. Um, in adding Prometheus uh, support, again, this is a first class you know, support uh, requirement for the project. And uh, as many of you who already use Prometheus, it's a very popular alerting and uh, monitoring and alerting framework, um, very popular in the Kubernetes uh, application space. And open telemetry has a core goal of supporting full Prometheus interoperability. So one of the things that we have done on the project is, you know, build out a full, uh, make sure that all the components that are ingesting Prometheus data or exporting Prometheus data are fully compliant with the uh, remote write compliance tests that Prometheus project has put together. Uh, we also have been enhancing the um, service discovery and the scape, scrape configuration support in the receiver 
Um, also something very cool, which we have been doing, which is very useful in, especially in Kubernetes environments is stateful set support, uh, building that out and adding that to the open telemetry operator, which we will be actually demoing today for this Prometheus pipeline, as well as an uh, contributed to Helm chart to be able to deploy um, the uh, open telemetry operator this, that which in turn uh, uh, deploys the collector and several collector instances. So that really gives a tremendous amount of flexibility awesome. in being able to support uh, Prometheus uh, to hotel uh, Super. interoperability. Super exciting, yeah. So really, really with that, uh, we could say that, um, you know, telemetry becoming more or less table stakes and traces are already uh, yes. GA, right? They're already yes, stable. traces, traces are, are uh, almost GA. Uh, every, every component, the metrics, SDKs, as well as the protocol is already stable. And um, uh, trace support is, uh, you know, the last component, which is the collector is right in progress, should be out this end of this month. So um, again, there is full support for X-ray. Uh, and of course, there's a new sampling SIG that we are working on also and contributing to. So uh, um, super happy to see the standardization also uh, impact our services such as X-ray, where X-ray's trace header is also uh, on its path to becoming fully compliant with the W3C standard uh, distributed trace header awesome. format. Cool. Ah, so, okay. Metrics. <laughs> ah, we have a step. Yeah, status. yeah. So right. that that said, again, you know, I just wanted to share a link for those of you who are interested in tracking what's happening with the metric support and where we are in that. Please check out OpenTelemetry.io slash status. Uh, we do keep this page where uh, you know uh, current at all times, and as you can see, uh, tracing you know has reached stability. The collector will go from experimental to stable this month. July and uh, metrics is right now in progress. Um, and with the protocol being stable, the API also has gone stable now. This is an, um, this needs uh, an, an update. And then SDK as well as collector are in progress. So uh, keep a lookout in the next, uh, you know, three months, you'll see a lot of, a lot of updates coming awesome. in from the project. Awesome. Um, so that said, we have a very cool demo. I'd like to introduce Shibo, who will be walking through the Open Telemetry Collector, uh, installing it in an EKS cluster through a Helm chart, and then configuring the collector with the, uh, using the Prometheus receiver and the remote write exporter, um, AWS specifically because it has SIGB4 support to be able to talk to our uh, AMP service. And then, of course, showcasing the AMP workspace with these Prometheus metrics. So, awesome. with that said, uh, Shiba, over to you. Thank you so much. And while we're doing the screen swap, um, yeah, um, congratulations. The project just incubated in CNCF, uh, Open Telemetry. And uh, yeah, that's, that's super exciting to see, uh, reassuring that we're in a good track there, um, getting everything into stable. And, yeah, super uh, no, excited. Yeah, yeah that's. that's uh, uh, Really, really a lot of energy and a lot of work in the yeah. F project. So for those of you who are not uh, <laughs> tracking it yet, please join in. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. So let's have a look at what uh, Hugo brought us here in terms of the, the demo. Over to you, Hugo. OK. So uh, thank, uh, thank you, Michael. I'm Sekualita. And today I will first introduce the uh, Open telemetry operator generally. Well, basically, the operator is an implementation of the Kubernetes operator. And at this point, it only has the open telemetry character as its only co uh, managed component. And users can easily manage their character instances through the operator as the Kubernetes CRD customer uh, re uh, resource definition. Okay, so let's dive into the operator. And I will show you how to install the operators through a ham chart into my EKS cluster. And uh, when, when the operator is ready, I will show to, uh, to configure the collector and use the Prometheus metrics and AWS PRW Prometheus remote, uh, remote writer uh, exporter to export the metrics data to my AMP workspace. Okay, so let's get started. So first, let's take a look of my EKS cluster. Okay, 
So as you can see at this point, it's pretty clean. I have uh, pre-installed the third manager, uh, which is a dependency of the open telemetry operator. The operator will use the third manager to generate the TLS certificate and place, into, uh, place the uh, self-signed certificate in the uh, secret and will use it to uh, between the communication of the webhook service and the Kubernetes API server. Okay, so let's install the uh, the, the operator and give it uh, give it the release name my, my OP. And at this point, the operator uh, it, uh, the operator PR is still uh, being reviewed by the upstream. So I will just install the ham charts uh, locally. As you can see here, this is my working directory. Okay, so let's install it. Uh, it, it may take some time. Okay, so here it gives the logs uh, logs info the 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 ham chart release name and its namespace. So basically, the uh, the ham chart release will be in the default namespace, but all the uh, resources of the operator will be uh, will be installed in a specific namespace. And I can show and I can show. Yeah. So let's get all the resources in the namespace open telemetry operator system. As you can see here, we got a port to services and the, uh, the operator is installed as the deployment. You can see here, and we can see the logs of this deployment. We need to uh, specify the namespace and the operator has two containers in this port and we will just look the logs of the manager port. Okay, as you can see here, it just uh, shows all the logs here, uh, something like uh, it's registering the web hook and uh, let's find some interesting starting the event resource and it's looking for the managed instance to upgrade well by the managed instance it means the character and at this point we don't have installed any so let's just try to install our character which will be used to scrape the metrics and would export to our amp workspace okay and here is a simple uh, you, you, uh, you know, collector configuration. Uh, well, let's look at it. So we will use the uh, a dot collector image, which is from the public ECR, and we will deploy the collector as the deployment, and uh, we will configure the collector as this. We will use Prometheus receiver and uh, you. Uh, use it to create a job named is Kubernetes API servers, and we will uh, specify the uh, simple limit uh, to avoid some, you know, metrics explosion. And we will use the Kubernetes SD configs to right. scrape the endpoints. Yeah, so, from so a, here is a, yeah. From a migration point of view, you can essentially, if you're currently running a Prometheus in cluster, whatever, you can take your promconf and essentially paste it under what is here, Prometheus config. Yeah. And, you know, all your scrapes, yes. everything you have there, relabeling everything, just, you know, migrate pretty easily, in, mm -hmm. very smoothly here, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Michael. Yeah, exactly. So here's the relabel configs. And here is our exporters, AWS Prometheus Remote Write Exporter. And here's endpoint is my own AMP workspace, the uh, and my AMP region. And, and also, I will use another exporter, which is logging exporter, and I will use the debug log level, so we, we can see so we can see the exporters logs very clearly. Okay. So uh, one uh, so one thing I want to uh, stress here is uh, we we need to give the characters the uh, uh, permissions of the actions so we will allow it to uh, script the Kubernetes endpoints metrics. Okay, so here basically is the configuration uh, file of the character and let's and, and let's apply it. 
it should be quick. Yes. We can see the character in our Kubernetes cluster. Yeah. So here is our collector. And well, as we, we, have, we have just seen the logs of our uh, of, of our operator and it said uh, something like looking uh, no managed components, something like that. And after we have installed our collector, we can just take a look again. And as you can see here, yeah, it should be here. Uh, we, we have just installed the character and the operator just found it. They communicate with the webhook service and it uh, it just manages this simplest character from now on. Okay, so let's take, uh, oh, sorry. I missed an L. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take, <laughs> let's take a look at the logs of this. Okay, see if we can see anything interesting. Oops, yeah, as you can see, it starts working to uh, to scrape the metrics. And because we use the logging exporter, so and we use the debug level, so it will just show all the uh, lo uh, log information in the terminal. And let's see if we can find something interesting. So here's matrix the descriptor. Its name is scrape simple scraped. And here is another matrix label. Its name is scrape simple post matrix relabeling. And here is another one, scrape series added. Okay, so let so let's just try to see if it's uh, in our AMP workspace. Oh, as you can see here, we also got the simple limit exceed, uh, exceeded. So it just shows that our configuration is working right now, and we got too many metrics data at this point. Okay, so let's try to uh, see if our uh, if, uh, if our metrics has uh, got its way to our MP workspace, and we we will use the AWS curl. Maybe I should. Just a, a just, note for yeah. for uh, yeah. folks who don't know it, uh, AWS curl implement sig v4 and that's why you can directly use it here to query that uh, endpoint there otherwise you would need to you know manually if you're using curl you would need to manually you know get get the sig v4 header yeah lens, right so aws curl essentially does that's that. a that's a very good call out michael because uh, i think that you know that sig v4 support is so is uh, is mandatory for all our uh service endpoints so Totally makes sense to use yeah. these uh, yeah. commands. Yeah, so that's a very good point. And I would also uh, recommend to use AWS curl. It's very, uh, it's very good to use to uh, to see to curve the uh, results from the AMP workspace. And I think uh, one thing you need to uh, notice that you must uh, give the option service APIs, and you need to uh, provide your AMP region. And here is your query, a, a, a query API. And I will just qu uh, query here like something I have found before, a script, simple script. And I will use JQ to print out the pretty JSON results. And let's see what it gives out. Oh, as you can see here, the result JSON is just like status is success. And it just uh, gives some results and the values, the, the metrics name in, in instance, job and values. Well, it seems like our metrics data has arrived my AMP workspace successfully. So I think that would be the demo. Awesome. Uh, cool. Thank you so much. Just a, as, a, as a note, uh, what you see there, um, like you know, API v1, etc. It's just a vanilla um, Prometheus query endpoint. Mm -hmm. Technically, it's, it's managed Cortex under the hood, um, yep. and you, know, you can do instant query, range queries, whatever. Um, you can plug that into Grafana. You can you just uh, use AMG, for example, manage Grafana. Uh, use a normal Prometheus data source and plug that in, and you would directly be able to see that as well. Yeah, yeah, awesome. and and, yeah. and Michael, I mean, you know, one of the things we have made sure to do is that it's fully um, 
you know, compliant with the standard implementation. Everything is open source, you know, in open so, telemetry itself. So, right. you know, it can be used not only for any other Prometheus remote right endpoints, uh, you know, that could be used like Thanos or others, uh, but also for, you know, AWS services, which also talk Prometheus awesome. remote right. Yeah, I think that very impressively showed how, uh, yeah, AWS and specifically you folks, your your team, um, are working both upstream in, in uh, you know ADOT and, and, and uh, hotel etc. And uh, yeah, how how we, you know, uh, for the benefit of our customers, uh, make it, make the world a better place. In, in the yeah, yeah, absolutely. Our... And then you know, very thankful again to both the Prometheus communities as well yeah. as the uh open telemetry you know community all we have all been working together in the prometheus work group on open telemetry and continue to you know do some really good work on interoperability um uh, which makes it seamless for the customer exciting so, news and, uh, exciting I'll, I'll definitely, uh, exactly and uh, i'll make sure that you know we'll revisit the topic later in the year maybe we get some updates around logs then and uh, yeah, yes it's, absolutely it's really, there's lots really, of good stuff coming up yeah, yeah. <laughs> Really so, so thank you again. both so much and uh, yeah see you around thank you uh, thank you for the opportunity thank you thanks michael bye